you stay right there. And look I'll at that. Oh, look at me. Oh, I like it. Thank you. That was once your height, though, so don't feel yeah. bad. <laughs> Imagine this. I'm walking through an airport. And I'm heading to the biggest trip of my life, the most, it's the most excited I've ever been in my life. And as I'm getting on and boarding the airplane, and uh, yeah, there are many advantages to being 6'9". Airplanes are definitely not one of them. But as I'm boarding the airplane and getting ready to sit in my seat, as I'm buckling my seat belt, I become overwhelmed with emotion. Extreme excitement, but also great anxiety. Has anybody in here ever felt anxiety and excitement all at the same time? Okay, I understand that you're here to observe me and, and critique me and everything like that, but is it, regardless, has anybody ever felt anxiety and the excitement all at the same time? Yeah. And that's what I was feeling. The excitement came because this is something I had dreamed about since I was a kid. Something I had an opportunity for, I've worked so hard for. I was flying to Europe to play professional basketball. Something I've dreamed about my whole life. And I was gonna become a professional athlete. Talk about excitement. The anxiety came because I was gonna be 5,000 miles away from my friends and family, living in a country whose language I didn't speak. And I, I didn't really know what to expect as far as my basketball experience. Flash forward eight months. I'm lying on a cold, hardwood floor. And as I'm lying there, I, I remember the people. I remember the people. And what, is I, what I heard is I heard people in the background, the fans in the background. It went from a loud roar to a sudden hush. And it was almost like I could hear people whispering in the background. That's what I remember the most. People whispering in the background. And I knew at that moment, during that moment, that my life had changed. That my life would change. Back to that story in a minute. As a result of my best-selling book, my TV show, and my work as a transition consultant for professional Olympic athletes, I have the honor of sitting down with Hall of Fame, all-star, and world champion professional athletes. Now, whether you're a sports fan or not, did you know 100% of professional athletes ultimately experience job termination? The undeniable fact, they all lose their jobs. 25% are broke and bankrupt within the first year out. 60% of NBA players are broke within five years out. Over 75% of NFL players are broke within two years out. And up to 80% experience divorce. From job loss, to bankruptcy, to disaster. This can be the reality. I've sat down with a gentleman that was pitching in a World Series in Philadelphia. And two years later, he was working in a rural factory in northern Michigan just to make ends meet. I had a guest on my TV show that was an NFL quarterback that following his sports career, he literally had a 15-year-old son that committed suicide, his business went bankrupt, and he spent 60 days in jail for drunk driving. I can go on and on and on about stories, but, but overpaid, oftentimes pampered professional athletes aren't the only ones that are facing change and adversity, aren't, facing, aren't the only ones facing transition. I, I currently live in Metro Detroit, and it's no secret that Michigan's been getting its butt kicked. No secret. We've lost over 200,000 jobs in the last five years. What is it that you're facing right now? What is it that your association or members of your company or, or, or your industry is facing right now? What transition, what change in adversity are you facing right now? In today's economic climate, change in adversity becomes synonymous with modern business practice. Are you having to do more with less, like the rest of us? I'd love to hear your stories over lunch today, but understand that I'm not here to give you all doom and gloom. I'm not here to talk about failure and people that have blown it and blown their money. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm actually here with good news to tell you that you can face transition. You can have change and adversity and have success again. As I did my research for the book and, and for the TV show, and the more I've spoken, and did research about organizations and businesses, I realized there was a commonality of success. People found success again when they faced change and adversity. And what I found is that there was five keys that they did to find success again. And being the simple mind that I am, I, I, I made an acronym so I could remember these five keys. Okay, so I, I, I created an acronym with these five keys, and please write these down. R-U-L-E-S, rules. 
R-U-L-E-S. For me, that was the acronym because it was easy for me to remember. There's rules of the game. There's rules in sports. There's family rules. There's rules of life. There's rules within our businesses. So rules was an easy acronym for me to remember what the five keys of transition were for success. And each letter stands for something. Each letter means something. The first letter, which is the first key in having successful transition, is refocus. Refocus. And the best way to refocus is to set new goals. And by setting new goals, you create a new passion and purpose in your life. Living without passion and purpose can be more dangerous than a lack of financial success. And so refocus is very important first key to surviving transition or surviving change. Best example of that in recent history started and began on January 16th of 1920. For you history buffs out there, that was the 18th Amendment. The federal law enacted the 18th Amendment that time. And for you history buffs, or non-history buffs, that's called prohibition. On January 16th of 1920, the federal government basically said you can no longer produce or sell your wares to the whole alcohol industry. Now at that time in America, there was 1,273 breweries in America. And by the time prohibition was done and shortly thereafter, there was only 244 left. 80% of their industry closed. 80%, talk about adversity. You're being told that you can no longer produce or sell your wares. That's adversity. Now, a little over 300 miles away from here, in a town known as St. Louis, Missouri. Anybody from St. Louis, by the way? Not here, okay. Little town in St. Louis, Missouri, there was two German immigrants who decided they weren't going to take this lying down and they weren't going to just kind of roll over and play dead. And Adolphus Bush and Eberhard Anheuser decided they were going to try to change and do whatever it took to survive this prohibition. Now, I don't know how you feel about alcohol or beer. I mean, we are in the Midwest, so I'm assuming it's okay to talk about beer a little bit? Okay, all right. But regardless, looking at the model and looking at the important part of how they survived change is more important to me, than we, whether it's a beer industry or whatever. But what they did is they refocused. Their refocus came in their product line. They could no longer produce or sell beer, so they refocused their product line and set new goals. They were making corn syrup, malt extract, ginger ale, root beer. They even made car and truck body parts, believe it or not, during that time. So if anybody in here knows somebody with a 1920 or 1930 automobile, you might want to check to see if it has an Anheuser-Busch car part in it somewhere, or a truck part in it, have them look in there. But regardless, they obviously survived that transition and that change. And it's no secret today, Anheuser-Busch is the largest brewery in, America, in the world, uh, employing over 30,000 employees, had $16.7 billion in sales last year. They survived the adversity. They survived the change by refocusing. The second key is the letter U, which is using network, using network. In other words, people and organizations that found success again in transition and change use their network. Anheuser-Busch had a vast network already in place of people and distribution. So all they do is once they refocus their product line, they were able to keep that efficient and continue. I've actually had the honor of, of getting to know somebody who made $100 million. A lot of money. $100 million. This guy made $100 million. And you know what? He made it playing basketball in the NBA. Isn't that ridiculous? I mean, that's more than some country's gross domestic product. And this guy made it playing basketball. And he made his $100 million playing basketball. So needless to say, for his transition out of pro sports, money wasn't as big an issue for him. But it was finding passion and purpose again. Now, he actually had enjoyed building father-son relationships. His father and son relationship were, were solid all the way through. And so one of the goals that he had, part of his passion, was to build father and son relationships. Well, pro athletes have a vast array of network around them. And as a result, he had a vast network of people. And so what he was able to do is use that network of people he had around him to continue his father and son ministry and building his father and son relationships. They did camps and speaking engagements, and he built father and son relationships. Use his network. The third key, which is the letter L, bar none, the most difficult part of transition. Bar none. And that stands for letting go. Letting go. Most difficult part of change, we have to let go. We have to let go of our past failures. Even more difficult, we have to let go of our past successes and continue. 
I've had the honor of sitting down with a couple of the Ford Motor Company executives recently. And I asked him, I said, what are you, what are you guys doing to survive these last five years? And what he shared with me was that they had a motto that they used to live on, and that was quality is job one. That was Ford's model, quality is job one. Well, they realized that they had to let that go because they weren't living it. They realized they weren't living it. And they realized that once they started making quality product and sending out quality product, people were going to buy it. And sure enough, that's what happened. And Ford, this past year, turned a profit of $2.6 billion in the first quarter. And that's without a dime of government money. They survived the change and transition by letting go and moving on. The next key is execute. Execute. And the best way for me to describe that is knowing what to do is not good enough unless you have the discipline to do it. In other words, you have to keep doing it over and over again and not giving up. I've had the honor of getting to know somebody that he grew up in the uh, bad part of Washington, D.C. Had success in high school, became a All-American in high school, athlete. Went on to Syracuse University. Had great success at Syracuse, became an All-American at Syracuse. Number one draft pick in the NBA, NBA Hall of Famer. After he was done playing basketball, he decided that he wanted to go into business. People laughed at him. They laughed at him. They said, you're just a dumb jock. What do you know about business? Besides that, at that time, he was an African American. That was another strike for him at that time, unfortunately. The people said, you know, and we don't take you serious. The guy went on to build a $600 million a year business. And now he's mayor of Detroit. And Dave Bing is looking to try to turn that city and work them through their change in adversity. He's continued to execute over and over again in different areas and have success. The fifth and final key is the S, someone. And that stands for someone. It's important for us to understand that we have to have a someone or a mentor, so to speak, that's been through this that can help us through change, help us through transition. Ford Motor Company, I mentioned, when I asked one of the executives, they said that they were being mentored by somebody who's been through it before. And many people don't know this, but Lee Iacocca actually used to work for Ford. He was the guy that launched the Mustang. And Lee Iacocca brought Chrysler three decades ago through a very difficult time in the auto industry. And they were tapping into him as a mentor to help. And so having someone, a mentor, to get through transition is very important. R-U-L-E-S. Those are the five keys. Back to my story. The week after my knee surgery, I lay on my parents' couch, sad, depressed, angry. I mean, here I was at the pinnacle of my career. We were in an undefeated season. I was averaging 25 points a game. I was having a time of my life, paid vacation, as I called it. It wasn't fair. It wasn't fair. And I lay on my parents' couch, knowing my life, and, and I, basically I lost my job. I lost my income. And as I lay there miring in my anger and, and disappointment and lack of passion, I realized that I didn't like and didn't want to feel that way anymore. I decided to pursue my master's degree in counseling so I could help people. So I can help people. That's what I do. That's what I want to do. And also, more importantly, I want to help organizations and understand that we don't have to mire in our change and our transition and our adversity that comes as a result of that. We can have success again. I challenge you. That when you go home tonight, when you go back to your places tomorrow, you're all in a position of, of leadership, I'm assuming, by being here today. When you go back, apply one of these five keys to the members of your association, to your organization, to your business. Apply one of them. Just pick one of them to apply and start doing that. I, I encourage you to do that. Pick one of them to help through whatever transition you might be facing right now, whatever change you might be facing. Because whether you're a pro athlete, a brewery, a car company, instruction business, uh, you know, insurance business, whatever your association member, whatever your industry is, we can have success again. We can face change and adversity head on and have great success again. That is why I'm here today and that's my message that I bring. I appreciate you having me here today and I look forward to chatting with you folks over lunch. Thank you.